In this video, we're going to start Chapter 7, Trends in the Periodic Table. Before we start, a few terms to be aware of. You are going to hear a lot the term effective nuclear charge. And this is the net positive charge experienced by an electron in an atom. Um, if we were to take sodium, for example, we know that the positive charge is in the nucleus. And if we're looking at the electrons in sodium, we want to look at the positive charge experienced by the electrons. The electrons in N equals 1 are going to experience a very strong positive charge because they're close to the nucleus. Electrons further out are going to experience a weaker positive charge and a positive attraction to the nucleus because they're further away from it. Another term you'll hear a lot is screening or shielding effect. And this is where the inner shell electrons block the outer shell electrons from feeling that positive attraction to the nucleus. If we take potassium, for example, as mentioned before, the electrons in N equals one will experience a very um, strong attraction to the nucleus. This electron here in N equals four will have a weaker attraction to the nucleus First of all, simply because it's further away, but also because of the screening effect of all these other electrons that are closer to the nucleus. They are all going to get in the way and block the positive attraction from the nucleus to that outer shell electron. They are going to screen or shield the positive effect, blocking it effectively. The first trend we look at is atomic radius. The atomic radius is half the distance between the nuclei of two atoms of the same element that are joined by a single covalent bond. Now, this may not happen um, naturally, but this is how the um, atomic radius is estimated. So you take two atoms, let's look at chlorine first, two atoms of the same element and join them together using a single covalent bond. You then measure the distance from the nucleus of one atom to the other, and that's going to be your diameter. We half that to give us the radius value. Carbon to carbon, um, a single covalent bond between them. You measure the diameter, so the distance from one nucleus to the other, and then half it to get your atomic radius. There's an important distinction to be made here between atomic radius and bond length. Bond length is the sum of the radii of any two bonded atoms. Atomic radius, you have to have two atoms of the same element in order to estimate this. Let's first look at the trend across a period. You can see from lithium to neon that the size of the atom decreases. The reason for this is there's an increase in effective nuclear charge because you're adding a proton each time. So this, the um, charge in the nucleus is stronger, which is going to pull those outer shell electrons closer um, into the nucleus, making the atom smaller. There's also no change in screening effect across the period because the electrons across the period are all being added to the same energy level. We have no new energy level with electrons in it to block um, the positive charge from the nucleus. If we look down the group, there is an increase in atomic radius. The reason for this is that each time we go down the group, um, there's a new energy level. So the electrons are further from the nucleus. There is also an increase in screening effect as we go down the group because there are more um, electrons in inner shells that are blocking the positive charge from the nucleus acting on the outer shell electrons. The second trend we're going to look at is ionization energy. As the name might suggest, the ionization energy is the energy required to make an ion. The full definition with the parts underlined being extremely important to mention are that it's the minimum energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron from a neutral gaseous atom in its ground state. 
So it's the least amount of energy you could possibly use to remove the valent electron, the most loosely bound electron, from a neutral atom, so um, like sodium here, neutral meaning it has no charge already. And a gaseous atom means that the substance that you're removing the electron from has to be um, a gas and it's in its ground state, so it's not excited. So any whatever um, element you're given as an example for this, your general formula for writing this out would be that you have X or A or B, whatever you want to say, becoming X plus and we have an electron being released from X, from that element. So on this graph, we have the trends of ionization energies across the first three periods. The first one here being um, period one, hydrogen and helium. We then have period two and period three. And just in general, what we can see from this graph, the general trend is that ionization energy increases as you go across a period. The reason for this is there's an increased effective nuclear charge, like we said for atomic radius, we're increasing the number of protons, which is going to attract um, the outer shell electrons, that should say. Um, and then the second reason is there's a decreased atomic radius. Electrons will be closer to the nucleus, meaning they'll be more difficult to remove. You'll need more energy to remove them. What we also could have seen from that graph um, was a decrease down a group for ionization energy. This is due to the increased atomic radius. The electron that we're going to be removing um, is further away from the attractive force of the nucleus, so it will require less energy to remove it. It will be easier to remove. There's also an increased screening effect as you go down a group. Um, meaning that the inner electrons are shielding the positive charge of the nucleus from the electron we want to remove and um, making it easier to remove. It requires less energy. If we go back here, we can see that there are some exceptions to this. If we just look at the second period here, you can see that here from um, beryllium to boron, and this would be nitrogen. I'm just looking at the numbers down here and that's what's telling me what they are. Nitrogen to oxygen. Um, those are some exceptions. So if we write out the electron configuration, we can see that the irregularities are to do with how stable the um, electron configuration is. In beryllium, an electron is being removed from a filled sublevel. In boron, it's being removed from a partially filled. It's not half filled, it's not filled. Um, and so we know that um, the filled energy level or half filled energy level is going to have extra stability. The electron being removed from a more unstable arrangement will require less energy. If we look at um, nitrogen, you can see the 2p sublevel is exactly half filled. It can hold six electrons and it has three in there at the moment. So again, that's going to have extra stability. In oxygen, however, you can see here that um, the p sublevel has four electrons in it. And so that's a more unstable arrangement that will require less energy to remove an electron. Second ionization energies, we have the same definition, um, just with a small little change. It's the minimum energy required to remove an electron from an ion with one positive charge in the gaseous state. If we were to then discuss third ionization energies, it would be from an ion with two positive charges in a gaseous state. So your second ionization energy using X again would be removing an electron from X plus, which was the result, the product of our first ionization energy um, to form a two plus ion.
Now, a question that can be asked is why is the second ionization energy always greater than the first? The reason for this is during the second ionization energy, the electron is being removed from a positively charged ion. When the first electron was removed, there was an increase in effective nuclear charge. We have the same number of protons, but it has fewer electrons to attract, meaning each one of those electrons will feel a slightly increased attraction to the nucleus. The closer an electron is to the nucleus, the more energy required to remove it. So because the ion is smaller than the original atom, more energy is required to remove an electron from the ion. This ionization energy also provides us with evidence for the existence of energy levels. I'd like you to pause the video here and just sketch down your answers to these questions. If you've that done, we'll go through the answers. Um, so the SP configuration um, for chlorine and the drawing of the orbital diagram is shown here. And what order they, the electrons will be removed in. Um, I'll highlight them here. So the first one will be this one. That's the last one we would have drawn in. The second one to be removed would be this one, the second last one we drew in. And then we would go from here to here to here. That's how our electrons would be removed and so on back along. If we look at the first eight ionization energies of chlorine. So this is um, just the two, four, six, seven, eight, eight electrons there when we're to remove those. If we look at the values um, of energy required to remove those. You can see that as we remove the electrons from the 3p, there's an increase, um, the unpaired electrons, then there's a slight increase to remove the 3s electrons. And what you'll notice here is this huge jump in energy required to remove an electron from the 2p sublevel. And that is what shows us evidence or provides us with evidence for the existence of these energy levels that these first seven electrons required you know increasing amounts of energy to remove them but not a huge difference and then there's a massive difference here at the end in order to remove that next electron that we're seeing is in the second energy level and if we look um, at all 17 electrons in chlorine, you can see the first seven here are being removed from energy level three. And then we have this increase in energy, a much larger increase than any of the previous ones um, in order to remove the next energy levels. Those would be um, from energy level two. And then you can see a big jump here again before we get to the electrons being removed um, from energy level one, those last two. So this ionization energy graph provides us with evidence for the existence of energy levels because there's a large increase in ionization energy when an electron is removed from a new shell or a new energy level. The reason for this is that the new shell is closer to the nucleus, so an increase in effective nuclear charge or less shielding. And also the new shell is filled, therefore it has extra stability, making the electrons more difficult to remove or that they require more energy to remove them. Part one, account for the difference in ionization energies of nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen has a more stable electron configuration. The electron being removed will be removed from a half filled shell and that will require more energy. Part two is asking us to account for the difference um, in the second ionization energy of sodium being nine times higher than the first, whereas neon, it isn't even double the first. The reason for this is in neon, the first electron and the second electron are both being removed from the same energy level. 
Um, however, in sodium, the first energy, the first electron is being removed from the third energy level, whereas the second electron, so for second ionization energy, that's being removed from um, energy level two. Energy level two is closer to the nucleus, um, so the attraction between the nucleus and the electron that we want to remove will be stronger, a stronger attractive force. And also this electron is coming from a filled energy level. So that's going to increase the amount of energy required to remove it as well. The last trend we're going to look at is electronegativity. Um, a quick revision of the definition. It's the relative attraction that an atom in a molecule has for a shared pair of electrons in a covalent bond. So when we're discussing electronegativity, we're looking at the nucleus of an atom and the attraction that that positive charge has for the electrons in a covalent bond. And so the electronegativity increases across a period. The reason for this is firstly, increased nuclear charge. There's extra protons being added um, to the nucleus as you go across. And so there's going to be a stronger attractive force pulling um, or attracting those electrons from the covalent bond. There's also a decreased atomic radius, meaning the distance between the positive nucleus and the electrons in that bond is smaller. As we go down a group, um, the electronegativity decreases. The reason for that is there's an increased atomic radius, so an increased distance between the positive nucleus and the electrons in the bond. And there's also an increased screening effect or shielding effect. There's electrons um, in the atom that are shielding the positive charge of the nucleus from the electrons in the covalent bond.